Howdy Jeepers and welcome back. We are in episode 10 of our Jeep 4.0 bolt-on performance series. In episode 10 we're going to go ahead and bolt on some 1.7 to 1 roller tipped rockers and we're going to put it on the dyno and we'll see what that does. Okay, so I just wanted to show you all what I got going on here. I've got the valve cover off and I'm just going through um, basically turning the motor over until both the intake and the exhaust are on the base circle. And then I just remove that set, bolt on the new set. These are the Scorpion uh, 1.7, um, 7 to 1 uh, ratio rockers. And um, these will clear the factory valve cover, or, or at least so they say in their documentation. We're gonna, we're gonna test that out. But um, yeah, so we just go through one at a time, replace them, and uh, they work with the factory push rod, which I think is kind of neat, and I actually tested that. Um, the uh, stock lifters have about 150 to 200 thousandths of travel and uh, the preload I was getting on these uh, based on the amount of turns I was doing and the thread pitch of the bolt, um, I was putting about 80 thousandths of preload on the rocker. So yeah, that's uh, you know roughly, roughly halfway through the lifter's travel, which you know is not a bad spot to be. So yeah, they seem like they're gonna work good with the factory push rods and uh, hopefully they clear the factory valve cover and we'll go ahead and get this thing back together and then we'll get it up on the rollers. All right, so we have our roller tip rockers all bolted up and we went ahead and reassembled the engine. I just wanted to talk a real quick second about the numbers and what this is gonna do for us. Um, the stock rockers are roughly 1.6 to one lift ratio. And, you know, on the intake with the stock cam, um, that gives us about 408 thousandths worth of lift at the valve and with a 1 7 to 1 ratio rocker that number goes up to 434 thousandths of lift so you know we get about 20 some thousandths more of valve lift and on the exhaust it goes from 414 to 439 um, it's also worth noting that it's not just lift it also slightly increases the duration um, and I don't really have a calculation for that. I'm sure there's calculators online. A guy could figure that out, but um, mostly it's it's the lift that we're interested in. Um, so now that we have the numbers, let's go ahead and heat this thing up and get ready for run number one. All right, we're all warmed up and we're gonna go ahead and roll this thing out and start pull number one. check out the numbers looks like we from the header vest we were at 152.6 and that's up to 160.2 and we're up from 187 torque to 191.3 and it's a pretty solid gain all the way across there's only a horsepower there but by 4,000 rpm um, we're already four horsepower and it just kind of continues up from there I uh, wanted to see here what our air fuel was doing. So it leaned out just a little bit, um, only a few tenths, but some nice gains up here on the top. Um, there's 145 to 153 in a little bit of a valley. Let's look at our uh, conditions today because we're a little warmer. Yeah, so we were 89 the other day and we're 94 today but our correction factor is roughly the same. Um, Humidity is also 37 versus 45. 
and so yeah um i mean that's a that's not a bad bad uh increase to start here eight horsepower so let's go ahead let the sink cool off a little bit and we'll start run number two all right we're all warmed up and we're ready for run number two it's brutally hot here today So run number two looks like it pretty much backed it up 159.6 off of 160 188 torque off of 191 air fuel just to tickle leaner there not too terrible bad run looks about the same all the way out let's go ahead and put the smoothing up and just see oops just see what it looks like so you can kind of get an idea of our best with the header versus the roller rockers. Looks like an improvement of a couple there. Um, 149 to 155, that's about six. 149 to 156. Down here at 4,000, you got 139 to 143. And uh, some torque as well. Uh, off of 182 up to 188. That's, uh, that's not a bad little gain. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll set up for run number three and then we'll do our uh, zero to 60 and our stab test. All right, we've cooled off just enough. We're gonna go ahead and do run number three and we're set up here, ready to go. Looking at run number three, uh, we're back up to 160.2 and 189.3. Um, so we're right there. We did uh, 160, 159, and then 160 again. So, I mean, we're, uh, you know, at least we're consistent, if anything. It did look like a little bit up here, like it was starting to kind of break up. And I'm wondering, I was looking at the air fuel, and it kind of looks like there's a little bit of a lean dip right here. We might need to go into that, you know, around 40, 4,800, 4,900 range and uh, put a little bit of fuel in there. There could be just a, uh, a cell in the map that's just a little bit lean. Um, but I would say by that point, we're already starting to drop our horsepower and torque anyway. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that for now. But uh, yeah. Overall, 160, 159, about 190 foot-pounds roughly. Um, let's go ahead, get set up for our 0 to 60, and uh, we'll compare that. All right, we're set up for our 0 to 60, and we'll go ahead and start that in 3, 2, 1... like um, just like the uh, the regular runs were showing us we picked up just a little bit um, there's six five there maybe a little bit less in second gear um, but the red line is up a little bit all over the place and let's go ahead I need to see on here where we hit 60 up 
Yeah, so the red kind of starts out a little bit in front, but they really kind of come together and they hit 60 round about the same place at 6.7, um, give or take. And like I said, in first gear, it looks like there's a little bit more spread than second gear. It's kind of a little closer together. So um, hmm, it's an interesting result. Let's uh, go ahead and set up our stab test and then we'll wrap this one up. All right, we're set up for our stab test and sampling in three, two, one. Let's go check out the data and see what we got. All right, so looking at our stab test, it looks like it didn't change a whole lot. Probably until, you know, it's only really a difference. I mean, that's only one horsepower, one and a half. And, you know, at 3,700, there's three. Kind of continues out with about one horsepower. I'm not seeing a huge gain. Um, torque, sort of the same story, um, 156 out of 154, 162 over 160. So, I mean, there's a couple foot-pounds there, but, you know, actually down here, it shows we're two foot-pounds down, and that just could be from the day um, being a little cooler yesterday. It is hot, hot, hot today, so uh, pretty interesting. I wouldn't say that we gained a lot real, real down low on this one. Mostly seems like it's more high-end power, and uh, I think that's going to be kind of the takeaway on this guy is, uh, you know, our, our real power was up higher. And uh, even though we're breaking up a little bit, and we probably could fix some of that with, with a little bit of fuel. And maybe I'll do that real quick since I got a little bit of time tonight. I'll throw a little bit of fuel in there, let it cool off for a little bit, and we'll see if we can get that a little smoother. Let's pull up, I want to pull up cat back before we did this header. I did not take the header off yet. I still haven't decided whether or not I want to do that and remove that thing since it really didn't pick up any power. But okay, so even from cat back, we can see, um, you know, there's a little bit of gain, about uh, six horsepower and not really any torque, but around about six horsepower starting you know, roughly 4,000 RPM and going up from there. And that's where our exit, um, our additional lift is really gonna shine, I think is, is at those higher RPMs, um, helping out with that airflow a little bit. So kind of see here what the lines look like. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's get back in the AC and then we'll wrap this one up. All right, I went in HB tuners and I just dialed up the fuel a little bit there on top. I wanted to just see if we could smooth that out and keep it from, uh, see if we can get rid of that misfire at the top. So let's do another pull. This is gonna be run number four, I guess. Power pulls. Just see if it gets any better. actually did a lot better. Let's take a look. All right. Yeah, it looks like it's still leaned out a little bit and it may not even be that it's actually leaning out. Sometimes if you get a misfire, it'll have kind of a, you know, it'll, it'll act like it's leaning out when it's really not. Um, it's a little smoother until we get to 5,000 and then it starts to kind of get a little weird. And it may be that we're starting to lose spring control up there. These are the stock springs yet, you know, 250,000 miles. Um, there's a possibility that up high we're starting to lose spring control. Uh, 159.05 and 189, so we're right back to where we were before, even after changing the fuel and and letting it sit for a little bit cool off 
So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, draw a conclusion on this guy and we'll wrap it up. All right, so we had some kind of interesting results from today's dyno session. Um, I really kind of anticipated, once again, I know this is becoming kind of a theme, but I anticipated these doing a little bit better. Um, you know, we picked up around six horsepower, which is not nothing. I kind of thought with the increased uh, lift and that little bit more duration that we'd pick up a little more than that. But, uh, you know, it just wasn't there for us. Um, the is it worth it scale, I guess, um, uh, that's up to you. Six horsepower, you know, although it's not nothing, um, this is the price right there from our favorite uh, people down here in Arlington, Texas. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, is it worth it for that? I couldn't really tell you. I will say they're kind of nice. They do fit under the factory valve cover, the non-adjustable ones. They do work with the factory push rods. Um, I verified that as well. So, I mean, it is a pretty much bolt-on, although it's engine in internal engine, it is a bolt-on. It can be done, you know, I did it in roughly two hours. Um, I just, you know, basically set everything up, checked everything, and uh, cleaned the valve cover and all that in, in roughly two hours. So um, six horsepower, two hours, and $400, $500. Um, I don't know, you, you have to be the judge. I guess uh, go ahead and write in the comments um, what your thoughts are on the uh, Scorpion 1.7 uh, roller rockers. Um, but I guess, uh, as always, thanks for watching. And if you like more of this stuff, like, subscribe. Um, episode 11, I'm torn. I'm not exactly sure on episode 11 yet. Um, we kind of have two big things left. One being a return fuel system. That seems like it would be the easiest one to do. I may try and knock that out yet. Um, otherwise, the only really other planned dyno session that I had, um, we were going to tear the top of the motor off. And uh, I'm going to take the head off. And we're going to cut the head down about 20 thousandths. We'll talk about all that. I've got a thinner head gasket to basically reduce our quench and uh, raise our compression a little bit. I've got a comp, a comp camshaft we're going to put in with a new uh, timing set and lifters. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. We might go in the head. I'll probably uh, smooth up the intake and the exhaust runners a little bit and maybe just polish a short side radius slightly and potentially do something with the valves because we also have to do valve springs uh, for the camshaft. And so, you know, I'm not really sure that falls in the realm of bolt-on. So I'm kind of thinking we might do the return fuel system first and then go to uh, to tearing the head off and doing internal engine work. But uh, if you want to see more of this stuff and you want to watch that episode, uh, go ahead, like, like and uh, subscribe. And as always, uh, thanks for watching.